Good to see you fellow Craftsrites, and good to see that you're interested in retaining as many of your digits as you possibly can. Now you may have seen this prototype push stick in some of my previous videos, and after a lot of testing and trial and error, I finally decided that it's ready to give to you and your shop free of charge. So why did I decide to build my own push stick when there are plenty of designs out there? I mean, they're all over the place. And part of the reason was for the longest time I've been using Inspire Woodcraft's design, which was great. I really loved it. It did have one or two bugs. The big ones being that it has kind of a high center of gravity with your hand all the way up here. And then the round over on it really encourages it to roll instead of staying flat on top of the workpiece. You have, you have to work to keep it flat. But nothing that I would kick it out of bed for eating crumbs for, if you know what I mean, until this happened while I was using it on the table saw. Now that's not Inspire Woodcraft's fault at all. This was probably user error. I made these holes a little larger than I should have, which didn't leave much meat here. So small amount of wood means weakness, it breaks. But that got me thinking about other designs and I came up with the one that you've seen me use for a while now. That's really enough of me talking about it though. Let's actually build one and then I'll go over why I designed it the way that I did and some of the features that it has that I think make it maybe a little bit better than some of the competition, but to each their own, you know? Let the work begin. I want to make two of these at the exact same time, so I'm going to use the old tape and CA trick. I didn't invent this, this isn't new, but it's a good one. Now this is overkill, but I want to make sure that I don't accidentally glue the two pieces of wood together. Now I'll just put some CA glue. Activator on the other. And stick them down. Okay, now that we've got the stock ready, the first thing we're going to do is drill out these holes in the center part. To do that, we're going to use a half inch Forstner bit and a one and three quarter inch Forstner bit. Now, I know there's going to be a bunch of comments about how the metric system is better, so give me one second. We're going to be drilling a 12.7 millimeter hole and a 44.45 millimeter hole. <laughs> I'm just giving you guys crap. We all know at its core, metric is better. Everyone in the US uses Imperial, everyone in Canada uses Imperial, a lot of British carpenters use Imperial. Until the whole world switches to it, I'm gonna have a hard time switching too, so bear with me. Drill bit quick change. Time. It would help if I turn the dust collection on. Now that we got these holes cut out, I'm going to use a jigsaw to clear out this waste with a, with a clean wood blade. So it, it'll get the best you can with a jigsaw. You're never going to get a super nice cut, but it'll do the job. Clean up some of these cuts with a file. Get down to the line. Also help with some of the transitions in between the rounds and the flats. Yeah, 
it's a lot better. Okay, so with the inside cut out and refined, so it's nice and smooth, the transitions are good, we can take it over to the bandsaw and cut the outside. That looks very Assassin's Creed, doesn't it? Ah, just like that, one becomes two. Now you may have noticed that I only finished these edges. That's pretty much where the hand goes. These ones I left the bandsaw mark on it because I've found that doing that actually gives it enough tooth to really kind of grip the stock. You can still glue sandpaper here if you want to, to give it a little bit of extra grip, but I found the bandsaw leaves a rough enough surface that it's got some, it's got some grip to it. Now that we got this all cleaned up, really all that's left to do is take a round over bit and clean up these inside edges. I'm gonna keep the outside edges flat because that's the part that references the workpiece and I don't want it to roll like some of the other ones have a tendency to do. So I'm just gonna round over these because that's where your hand goes. Oh and I'm gonna break these edges with some sandpaper. Oh yeah, yeah, that feels good. So, not a pro pretending to be a pro tip. <laughs> if you ever have any of these sanding sponges and they wear out, don't throw them away. They work really good as backers for other pieces of sandpaper, especially for breaking edges. Damn it. All right, so we have two finished push sticks. You might think that I designed them the way that I did because I was playing Assassin's Creed at the time, or it was Halloween and I was inspired by coffins, or I was watching Star Wars and it kind of looks like a Millennium Falcon or some other starship, but I can promise you it was none of those things. There were just a few key features that I wanted in a push stick and this was the design and shape that facilitated it. So what are those features? Why did I make this the way that I did? The first thing is I made it out of plywood. Hardwood has a tendency to break a little easier than plywood because plywood has the alternating grain pattern. Now, that doesn't mean it's infallible or unbreakable, but this was more user error than the actual plywood. If I had left more meat here, it probably would have been okay. This large hole in the center section makes it really easy to grab from either side if you have little hands or big hands. And it also makes it very easy to hang on things like at your bandsaw, your table saw, your jointer, your planer, wherever you're gonna use a push stick, it's very easy to hang. And one of the important things about safety tools is they need to be accessible. They need to be right there, otherwise you're not gonna use them. That's why I wear these bandanas. I'm notoriously bad about not going and getting my respirator or dust mask when I need to, but if I have this around my neck, I have no excuse not to do this. If you're gonna have safety implements in your shop, and you should, make sure that they're accessible and nearby. This center section also gives it another feature, which is it's very easy to hold while you're manipulating stock at the table saw. I can hold my push stick, manipulate this, and then when it's time for the stick, slide it on through. This shape also makes it so that your hand, it's tall enough so that your hand is well away from the stock as you're sliding it through, which is a must for a push stick. It has two different depths on the sides. One side for thick stock, the other for really thin. When it comes time to do quarter inch or eighth inch, this is too big and it actually gets in the way. That's why I wanted to include small little teeth on one side, larger teeth on the other. It can also be used on its side, which is great for bandsaw work. You can even lay it flat on the table. This angle, these are actually parallel to each other and that makes it so that you naturally put pressure on the workpiece instead of having to crank down with downward force. 
just simply pushing it through puts ample pressure along this surface. And then one of the big ones for me is you're pushing the stock through with this as a stick or a block instead of pulling it through like some other designs. But I'll actually show you that at the table saw. It'll make more sense. So what do I mean by pulling versus pushing the work through? So this is kind of your typical push block design. This isn't targeted at anyone. There are a lot of people out there that make push blocks designed this way where it's something to hold on to with a little nub to grab the piece. But the point is, when you're pushing the workpiece through, you're naturally gonna hold this in the middle, maybe at the end, but more than likely you're gonna hold it in the middle. By the time your hand reaches the blade, so my hand is well over the blade now, there's still a good three inches to be cut on this piece. So I'm dragging it through the cut. The blade is still cutting the wood while my hand is over it. I personally don't like that. That's why I designed this the way that I did, so that by the time my hand reaches the blade, or pretty close to it, this is already finished cutting and I can just push it through. Or if I'm feeling extra squirrely and I don't even want to get my hand that close to it, that's why I put these front teeth on. I can push through, or I can actually from a distance like a push block or a push stick. Dragging the workpiece through the cut, so you're pulling it through the cut, pushing it through. Now that you've seen how easy these are to make and how they work, it's my sincerest wish that you download a set of these plans for completely free from my website, craftsright.com, and make some for yourself. It's always good to have safety equipment in your shop because it's always a good idea to practice good technique. You wanna keep these for as long as you can. With that being said, Keep up the good work, and we'll see you in the next video. One becomes two. Isn't that a Spice Girls song? When two become one. Fun fact, that was my first concert ever. Spice World. Spice up your life. Everybody, every girl, spice up.